Hello everyone. Today I want to show you how to animate and explode a salamander skull. So you'll see that I have Blender open here. Blender is the software that I use to edit meshes and do my animations. So I've opened up all of the meshes that make up my salamander skull and you can see that they are all individual meshes. If you want to import uh, several elements that are in a single mesh file, like this squamosal here, which in which I have both of the squamosals as a single mesh, you can do that and split them apart. To do that, you can just select the element that you want to split apart, come up here, click on object mode, and then change into edit mode. So then you'll see that you're able to edit your mesh. And to split them apart, you're just going to use the box select tool, select a little piece here of your element and then hit control L. And that will select all of the pieces that are linked together, which is this side. Then you're going to right click and hit separate selection. And then you'll see that, that has split these two apart. So if I go back into object mode, you'll see that I now have two objects and you'll see them come up in here. So we've got our left squamosal and then our right squamosal, which I'm going to rename by just double clicking and renaming. Okay. So when you have all of your pieces individually imported into Blender, you want to set the origin for your scene. The origin is basically going to be the center point for any rotation or movement that you do. So right now the origin is set to the middle of the world origin. The world origin is where the X, Y, and Z axes all meet. Um, and it might help if I switch on the Z axis, which I can do in here. So now I've got the Z axis in there too. So for example, if I were to select all of my meshes here, and then use this rotate tool to try and rotate this. It's going to rotate from that origin there. That is not what I want. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to select the 3D cursor and I'm going to plop the 3D cursor into, I think is probably about the middle of the scene. I think that's pretty good. Um, so now that that's all there, uh, you want to make sure all your meshes are selected. Oops, put it back. You want to make sure all your meshes are selected. Select uh, the select box tool again, and then hit the letter A. Letter A just lets you select everything in your scene. And then you're going to right click, go to set origin, and then set origin to 3D cursor. So now that little dot that used to be at the world origin is down here. So now if I try and rotate it, it will rotate from that point. Awesome. Okay, now what I want to do is pull the salamander skull to the world origin so that we can use this grid um, to help us make our animation nice and crispy. So what I'm going to do is making sure everything is selected. I'm going to snap my cursor to my world origin. So then you can see my 3D cursor has jumped back into the world origin. Then I'm going to do it again, right click, and this time I'm going to snap my selection, which is all of my meshes, to my cursor. So then it's in the middle. So then I am going to... Uh, using my rotate tool, I'm going to align this with the axis in a sensible way. So to do this, I'm going to use this little tool up here to change my view so that I'm viewing. So if I hit the X axis right now, I'm viewing as if I was uh, on the X axis. So if I'm on the X axis, um, I can rotate this around. What about the z-axis? Oh yeah, we need to straighten that up. Okay, that's good. What about the y-axis? 
a little bit that way, maybe. Um, but yeah, now that's in the middle. And that looks good. We've set our world origin. And we've set the origin of our scene. So we're ready to animate. Okay, so now that we're ready to start animating, we are going to come up into this top toolbar here and click on animation. It's going to take us into animation mode. So you'll see uh, this viewer here, which is where we're going to do all of the moving of our pieces. You'll see another viewer here. This is going to reflect any movements that we do here are going to be seen here. Um, we can put the vertex colors on if we want. Um, if you also, if you have vertex colors set and you don't see them, you can turn them on uh, in this viewer as well. So the first thing we want to do is use the dope sheet down the bottom here to set our first keyframe. So to set our first keyframe, we want to make sure that this little blue line is not set at zero. We're going to set it uh, probably at 10. So this is going to set the first position of your explosion, which will be all the pieces together. Um, so hit the A key. This will select all of your meshes, then hit the I key, and this is going to bring up your insert keyframe menu. For this animation, we are not going to rotate anything or change the scale of anything. We are only going to change the location. So for this keyframe, we're just going to click location, and that has inserted a keyframe here for all of these meshes, which you can see as the little dot here. And if you scroll down, you can see the keyframes for each individual thing. Um, if we just select a single mesh, we can see one keyframe here. OK, so that's the keyframe for that mesh. And each mesh has its own keyframe. Now, we can start moving the parts apart. So we grab this little blue bar again and we pull it away. It doesn't really matter where it is now because we can move it later. But we just want to make sure it's away from this first keyframe. And now we're just going to use our move tool here to move the pieces into the positions that we want them to move into when the skull explodes. So it doesn't really matter how you do this. But... Um, I would normally start by moving some of the bottom pieces down. So I'm going to, if I hold it down shift and click on some of these pieces, I can move them down. So I've selected all of the pieces of the lower jaw right now. And I'm going to use the um, blue arrow, which is the Z axis mover, and drop the lower jaw down. Right? Maybe I'll move the dentaries forward a bit and maybe I'll move this piece back a bit, tiny bit um, and then I'm going to move them apart in a different direction so I'm going to select both pieces on this side I'm going to hit uh, my Z axis hit it again to flip it back over and then I'm going to use the red arrow to move it out. And this is where the grid comes in handy because you can see how far you've moved your pieces and make sure that when you move the pieces on the other side, you move them the same amount. Okay, I can move, I want these pieces to all move together. So I'm just going to move them into a single space. So you don't have to use the arrows to move. You can also use these boxes here. So this red box is going to move along this plane. I want all these pieces to move together because they're all part of the same structure. Then I might grab some of these front elements here. Move them forward. Oops, I can hit Control Z and undo because I missed the other nasal there. I pull them all forward together. Maybe I'll pull these apart. Maybe I'll pull these apart this way. Again, you can see how far we've pulled them apart. And do the same on this side. 
I want to pull my maxillas out a bit further. And my nasals up a bit higher. Maybe I'll move the pre-maxillas back in. But you get the idea. And then you just keep moving your pieces around until you explode your entire skull. I'm going to pause the recording while I do this because I think I think I've showed you enough to know how you would, might go about this. And you don't have to do it this way. You could do it your own way. Anyway. So now I have moved all of my pieces apart. You can see them all in their exploded positions. And I can check what they look like. I review by clicking on the little axes buttons up here and I'm pretty happy with that. They're all far enough apart that you can see them. Actually I might pull the vomers apart a bit more. Like this. Okay, now I'm happy with it. So now we need to add our next keyframe. So we're going to, again, hit the A key. It's going to select all of our meshes, hit the I key, get our insert keyframe menu, and then we're going to hit location. You can see it's added another keyframe here. So now, if I grab this blue thing and drag it backwards, you can see the movement between the first and the second keyframe. So the next thing I'm going to do, because I want, when I want this skull to explode, I want it to stay in its exploded position for a few seconds before it puts itself back together. So all I'm going to do is hit this keyframe here, make sure it's selected in yellow, right click, duplicate. And then I'm going to just insert it, maybe I'll put it here. So it's just going to make sure that this uh, position stays like this uh, in this time frame here. Okay. Now, to put our skull back together, all we need to do is select our first keyframe where all the pieces were together, right click, duplicate, and then put our final keyframe in the end. Okay. So now you'll be able to see all the pieces put themselves back together. Go back to the start. If you hit the little play button here, you see it in action, pulling itself apart, pausing, putting itself back together. It's a little too quick for my liking. So I'm going to extend the time, the, the maximum time of the dope sheet to 220. Is, a, is I found a good number. And then I'm going to adjust all of the keyframes. So and I'm going to put this one here. So if we're at 220, then our halfway point is here at 110. So I want that. So I want the pieces to stay apart for a good amount of time. So I've just doubled the amount of time that they're going to stay apart. Um, and I've got a good amount of time at the start and the end where the pieces will be together. So this will, um, when it turns into a 3D model, give enough time for the viewer to pause the animation at those points and view the disarticulated or articulated skull. So now let's see what that looks like. It'll be a bit slower. It will pause for a bit longer and then it will put itself back together. And that's going to play on a loop, so um, it will keep doing that until you hit pause. Or you can use the space bar key to um, play or pause, or play or pause. Okay, so now that we've animated our skull and we have our 3D model, we want to make sure this is saved um, as a blender file. So we can go File, Save, um, and I've already saved this, which is why it's not coming up, um, but it is saved in the Blender format. And then 
to upload this to Sketchfab, what you can do is install the Sketchfab plugin, which I already have installed. And then over here, we have our little Sketchfab bar here. So I'm going to activate my Sketchfab add-in, add um, which if I pull this apart, you can see that I'm logged in as, as the Blackburn Lab. Um, I don't need the import uh, tool, I need the export tool. So I'm going to give it a title and it's going to be um, Spotted Salamander Skull. And then if I hit the upload button, so you don't have to do anything else after you hit the upload button. This model will now just appear when you log into Sketchfab and look at your uploads page. And I have a little something I prepared earlier. This is the same salamander skull um, which I uploaded with Blender exactly as I just showed you using the Blender plugin. Um, and you'll see anything that I upload using the Sketchfab plugin in Blender will be indicated here. Um, but this is the same model. It has a color key and it has annotations added which you can do as you would normally do in Sketchfab. And that's it. Have fun exploding skulls.